O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, today's gospel reading, once again, takes place in the upper room on the night that Jesus was betrayed. Isn't it amazing that even now, just hours before he's crucified, Jesus is still concerned about us. He's concerned about us, our peace, our joy, and our faith. Think about it. He's about to be whipped, stripped, and nailed to a cross. He had the biggest burden on his mind right now is to make sure that we, as followers, know where we can find Peace, joy, and faith. Look at verse 27. Here we see peace. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And then look at verse 28. Here we see joy. Jesus says, You heard me say, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would have been glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And then look at verse 29. Here we see faith. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Peace, joy, and faith. Jesus says, I want you to have peace. I want you to be deeply joyful. I want you to believe in what I say and what I do and trust in me. He says, I want you to know and experience the kind of peace, joy, and faith that I give, and not as the world gives. Now, as Lutherans, we're fond of reminding ourselves over and over again that it's the Holy Spirit who does all that in our lives, right? It's the Holy Spirit who creates these things and strengthens these things in our life. But how does he do it? How does the Holy Spirit create peace, joy, and faith in our life? The main way, but not the only way, is to use the scriptures. The Holy Spirit creates and strengthens peace, joy, and faith inside us through our hearing the Word of God. Because when we hear the Word of God and the Holy Spirit shows up, He enables us to hear the voice of Jesus Himself speaking to us. And then that external word that strikes the ear becomes an internal word that strikes the heart. And when we hear Jesus speaking to our heart, things start to happen inside. Let's look at verses 25 and 26. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Here Jesus is answering the same question that many people today are still asking themselves. How can I know the Bible is true? How do I know that the Bible is reliable? The I mean, apostles didn't have voice recorders back then. They didn't have video cameras back then. So how are they possibly going to remember all that Jesus taught them? And how are they going to possibly understand all those things that they do remember because they don't know what's going on half the time, right? Jesus gives us the answer here in verse 26. And it's the same answer that Paul gives in 2 Timothy chapter 3 when he talks about the Old Testament. He writes, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training and righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So Paul here is talking about the Old Testament, but he says that all Scripture is God-breathed and inspired by God. In other words, as Scripture was being written down, it was being overseen, it was being protected by the Holy Spirit as it was being written down, so that it is without error. In other words, because God's Word is inspired by the Holy Spirit, you and I can know that it is reliable, it is profitable, and it is powerful. And because God's Word is inspired by the Holy Spirit, you and I can now stake our life on God's promises that are found in the Holy Scriptures. And that's just the Old Testament. What about the New Testament? How about the documents that the apostles themselves wrote about Jesus, about what He said and what He did? Again, Jesus gives us the answer right here in our Gospel reading, verse 26. Jesus says, in my name, God the Father will send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will remind you of all that I said to you, and then he will teach you all things. He will remind you of what I said, and then he will teach you what it means. 
In other words, the Holy Spirit himself helped the apostles remember all that Jesus said and did. And then he helped them understand all that Jesus said and did. And then he oversaw them as they wrote down in the Gospels all that he said and did. So that what we have today is true and without error. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So today we confess with the entire Church of God that both the Old and New Testaments are the inspired Word of God. And they are reliable. And they are profitable. And they are powerful. In fact, they are so reliable, profitable, and powerful that the Holy Spirit can actually use them today, these words of God, to strike our hearts and create peace, joy, and faith through them. Look at verse 27 again. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So we see here that Jesus wants the Holy Spirit to use the Holy Scriptures to make you and me into a fearless and peaceful person. He wants to free us from anxiety. And this is why it's so important for us to hear these promises of God from the Scriptures again and again and be reminded of promises like, I will never leave you or forsake you, or I will give you your daily bread, or ask and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Or one of my favorites. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In other words, the kind of peace that Jesus wants to give you and me by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Scriptures, is not based on whether or not our life is safe and problem-free. Because that's the peace the world tries to give us, right? The world says, this is what you need, that peace of mind. Make sure you stay healthy. Make sure you've got enough money saved up for retirement. Make sure that you stay debt-free. Make sure you have enough insurance. And then you can have peace of mind. That's the peace the world gives. But if you happen to lose any of those things, buy my peace, right? It depends on your circumstances. That's the peace the world offers. It's not based on promise. It's based on circumstances. But the peace that Jesus gives is not based on whether or not our life is smooth whether it stays problem-free, because let's face it, life is never smooth. Life never stays problem-free. No, the peace that Jesus gives us is based rather on God's unshakable promises. His promises to be with you when it gets stormy. His promise to provide for you when the economy goes bad. His promise to carry you through the valley of shadows. Again, the peace that Jesus gives is based on God's promise, not on our circumstance. So whenever we read God's Word and we hear God's Word, the Holy Spirit reminds us once again of these promises and He enables us to hear Jesus speak to our heart so we can hear Him say, Peace, be still. I am with you, even to the end of the age. So the Holy Spirit wants to use the Holy Scriptures to give you the peace that only Jesus can offer. But let's look at verse 28. Jesus says, you heard me say, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would have been glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. So we see here that the Holy Spirit not only wants to use the Holy Scriptures to make you into a peaceful person, He also wants to use them to make you and me into a joyful person. Because Jesus reminds us here in verse 20 that He is going away, but He's also coming back for us again. And he tells us here that we should be glad and rejoice that he's going off to see the Father. Why? Because earlier in John chapter 14, verses 2 to 3, Jesus says this. He says, In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would tell you. I go there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you may be. Also. In other words, no matter how crazy or how disappointing life may get for us, Jesus says there is still an incredible joy in knowing that this world is not the end of the story. Because you and I now have a place waiting for us in our Father's house in heaven. And we're going to get to see Jesus there someday, face to face. And we can find joy and comfort in that. That there's something in our life that we can always count on. And everything else seems so up in the air and so uncertain. So, in the same way, when our loved ones die and leave this world, yes, we do experience sadness. Yes, we do experience even anger. But, 
Again, we know that that's not the end of the story either, don't we? Because we can find comfort and joy in knowing that we'll get to see them again someday in our Father's house as well. Yes, this promise that Jesus has gone away to the Father, but that He is coming back again for us is good news of a great joy that only Jesus can offer us. And when we read God's Word, we hear God's Word, the Holy Spirit reminds us of this good news, and He enables us to hear Jesus speak to our heart so we can hear Him say, Rejoice, for I go to prepare a place for you, so that where I am, you may be also. So the Holy Spirit wants to use the scriptures to give you not only peace, but also the joy that only Jesus can offer. Finally, let's look at verse 29. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Faith. Jesus tells the apostles that he will die, but then he'll also rise again. Jesus tells us that he will go to the Father, but he'll also come back again for us. And he tells us that our enemy, the devil, is alive and well in this world, but not to worry because Jesus has bound the strong man so the devil no longer has any power over us in this life or any time. And Jesus tells us in John 16, 33, that in this world you will have trouble, but take courage, for I have overcome the world. In other words, Jesus tells these things, tells us these things now before they happen in order to awaken faith inside us. He tells us these things now before they happen to remind us who's really in charge. Who's in charge of this world? Who's in charge of my life? In whose hands does my fate really rest? Jesus says it's not the devil. It isn't Pontius Pilate, he says. It's not King Herod. It's not the government. It's not the economy. It's definitely not me. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And when we read God's holy word, we hear God's holy word, the Holy Spirit reminds us again who is really in charge. Who holds us in the palm of his hand? And the Holy Spirit enables us to hear Jesus speak to our hearts so we can hear him say, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority, he says, to take it up again. And if that was true, in my darkest hour, Jesus says, it remains even more true during your darkest hour. Therefore, trust me, Jesus says, and put your faith in me and in my power. So the Holy Spirit is working in you and in me right now to create this peace, to create this joy, to create this faith that only Jesus can offer. May it be awakened in us today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit who brought to mind the apostles and the holy prophets everything that was said and done so that we know it is without error. We know that it's powerful, it's profitable, it's, it does something. And you, Holy Spirit, work through this Holy Word to create inside us peace, and joy, and faith. Many people throughout Centuries have, have risked their lives, they have sacrificed their lives to get the word of God and translation in the language of the people so that we could have the scriptures in front of us today. And oftentimes we just let it gather dust in our homes. We pray, Father, that we would treasure this gift that you've given us for what it really is. And as we read it, it's hard to understand, but we pray, Holy Spirit, you would help us to understand. Be our teacher, we pray. We love you, we praise you, we pray these things in Jesus' name.